Well, uh, this month we're going to talk about uh, georeferencing, and uh, I have to admit that I'm uh, not really an expert in this, so I'm uh, uh, learning as I go along, and uh, I may suggest some workflows that are maybe a little crude or uh, not quite optimal. So if anyone uh, has a better idea, please jump in. And um, uh, hopefully um, we won't crash and burn. How's that? Uh, so let's see. Let me start a new document here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to see who all is here. Yeah, all right, fantastic, great. All right, let me share my screen. And uh, I'll go ahead and share my Vectorworks. And we're gonna need Firefox too. Hello, Al. Hey, everybody. All right, can, can everybody see my Vectorworks screen here? Yep. Okay, terrific. So I just started a brand spanking new document. I'm going to um, go and uh, change my layer scale to something that's more conducive to sites. It's kind of a big site. So I'm gonna go one to 50. And um, my units are feet and inches, but it's probably recommended that you change your units to whatever uh, default georeferencing units you're gonna be using. You may wonder what that means. We'll figure it out. Um, so um, in a nutshell, georeferencing is just a way to uh, set your file's origin to correspond to the actual world. And um, if you've done any reading on the subject or if you're familiar with uh, various um, projection methods, then you'll know that there are just a variety of different um, uh, ways to represent a spherical curved surface onto a flat surface, uh, all of which are in one way or another imperfect. And uh, so it's really a matter of, of ch choosing the projection method for your um, work that um, either your rest, the rest of your team are using or uh, that suits you for, for one reason or another. It's, it's pretty esoteric. I have a conceptual knowledge of it, but not really a practical knowledge of it. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, but uh, if you're, if you're georeferencing, it's very likely it's because you're working with somebody else. And so there should be, there should definitely be agreement on your project team as to which projection system you're going to be using. And you know, suffice it to say that if you're working at the scale of single buildings, um, like I do, for example, in my practice, then uh, the curvature of the Earth is, um, you know, it's a conceptual thing. Uh, but when you're working on very large projects, then that that actually can come into play in terms of making sure that things are the correct distance from each other. So. Um, Let's see, where am I going to start? I guess I will start by uh, showing you the uh, georeferencing tools. So here I've got my palette and here's my, my site model palette. Let me open that. Okay. And uh, you can see that there is a geolocate and a uh, georeference or a geo image tool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the geo image tool. And uh, right away, you can see that I've got a various coordinate systems that I can use. And again, as I said before, I'm going to use the coordinate system that's appropriate to, uh, to my team for uh, purposes of this demonstration, uh, since we're not doing any actual location of actual uh, built infrastructure, uh, there's really no harm. So I'll go ahead and choose that. And you can see that right away, as soon as I activate that tool, I get uh, this uh, image. And if you're wondering what that is, uh, let me pan back. 
And uh, by default, Vectorworks sets the um, origin of your file with the center of uh, the Washington Monument on the National Mall in uh, Washington, DC, USA. There you go. And I can just keep, I'm just hitting command two to zoom back and you can see that as I do so, it's kind of like having uh, Google Earth right here um, in my Vectorworks file. So I can zoom in or zoom out. And as soon as I, by default, as soon as I activate another tool, like say the pan tool, right? You can see that that image goes away. So the image isn't being uh, permanently copied into your file. It's just being temporarily projected only while the geo image tool is active. So I reactivate the geo image tool and, um, and it, it um, uh, shows me the, the uh, aerial photo. Again. Francois, can I yes. ask a question? Uh, regarding the uh, projection system, we uh, understand that uh, the city of Austin is based on a flat plane system, their GIS, and that surveyors locally uh, do their surveys and produce those in a flat plane uh, projection system. This that you're showing here seems to be flat plane, though it may not be. Um, is one of those four that you mentioned earlier? If someone, and the reason I'm asking is, if someone tasked me or anybody on this call to, to recommend the system, which one would be flat plane? Do you know? They're all flat plane. They, these are all different projection systems like Mercator and so forth that are designed to represent a curved surface onto a flat surface. Got it. You're drawing. Okay. So, okay. so they're all, they're all flat plane, but the question is, how is it? And, you know, we've all seen different kinds of world maps, right? Some of which that make, you know, Greenland, you know, the size of Mars, um, when really it isn't, right? And so those are all different projection um, methodologies to try to represent a spherical surface, which by the way, isn't perfectly spherical anyway, onto, onto a flat surface. So they're all flat plane. And, you know, I would defer to the, the civil engineer or the um, surveyor on the team for a project where that projection decision is critical to the success of your project. Have them, you know, chime in with what system they're using and have everybody on the team use the same system, but they're all flat. Plane. Cool, thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, so let's investigate the tool a little bit further. Uh, you can see that I have a little settings dialog box here. That's always a good place to start. So let's go ahead and look at those preferences. So you can see that I've got an image resolution and then I can select a service, right? So I'm just gonna go with the custom 1024 pixels and it's downloading the data. And so um, you can see that by default, Vectorworks is, is giving you um, ArcGIS online. And uh, that is a, um, a paid service, service, excuse me. You can, you can add other, I tried to add the uh, ESA, European Space Agency service, um, just because they have free resources um, unsuccessfully, I might add. I mean, I, I managed to get an account with them, but I haven't figured out how to link it uh, here. So, um, and, uh, but the, the, even with ArcGIS, which is a paid service, you can register for a free account if it's uh, for non-commercial uh, purposes, which I'm just doing in demonstration here. So it's a non-commercial purpose. And uh, boy, I wish I could remember what my username was and that it would remember all this stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it didn't remember it. That's, <laughs> uh, that's no good. Uh, so, um, uh, that's okay. I can, I can get back to it. So you can see that your, your imagery here uh, you can choose imagery or National Geographic or oceans or topographic. So the kind of imagery that you that you want. Um, in this case, here's uh, terrain with labels or a dark gray canvas. Any any number of image types that um, are uh, suitable for your project. Um, 
And so uh, here we're just going to go with, with imagery, All right? And which is what we have here. So I'm just going to cancel out. Now, if, let, well, the imagery is is built into the service. Correct. I see. So if you used a different service, there might be a different list of imagery options. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So um, so this is all great. Uh, it's nice to know where things are, but um, uh, uh, this is of somewhat limited usefulness for my purpose. Uh, for one thing. I'm not really doing any projects currently on the mall. Uh, <laughs> I want to be, you know, far, far away. So, uh, so let's go to our uh, document settings and let's go to georeferencing. Okay. And you can see that it has automatically uh, input the latitude and longitude of the uh, uh, Washington Monument right here. Um, uh, just, you know, that's what it does by default. So um, I'm going to flip over here to, uh, to Firefox. Uh, can you guys see my web browser window? We see it. Okay, great. So I'm just going to, you know, pick a spot. And again, this this may not be the the most optimal. Um, this may not be the most optimal uh, methodology here. Um, uh, th th there may be a better way of doing that. Um, but let's see. I'm looking around. Where do I want to be? Sure. This might be it. I don't know. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Let me go over to my uh, aerial so I can see where, I'm, yeah, okay. So let's just say that over here, this is, this is gonna be my, my building site somewhere over here, All right? So I'm just gonna click on this point and right click on it. And you can see that um, Google Earth is giving me, or, or Google is giving me a, uh, a latitude and a longitude for that, for that point. So uh, I'm just gonna go very old school here and just uh, jot that down on a piece of paper. Did you right click to get that principle? Yeah, I just right clicked, correct. Oh, I've got something in the chat. Yes, Jacob's like right click is the way to go. Just reinforce right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now that I've got those coordinates, I'm done with um, I'm done with this, and I'm going to go back here to VectorWorks, and I'm going to type in the coordinates thirty five point seven one one two eight, and the longitude and negative one hundred five point nine two seven five eight. There's no geometry here. And so you can see that the, my, my drawing origin is still here. If we zoomed in, um, then, uh, which, you know, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a command four and I'll go back. So, you know, here we are, there's that point. Um, let me pan back just a little bit. Great. So, so I now have um, the origin of my of my drawing is georeferenced to an actual coordinate on the Earth, which is, you know, kind of nice, kind of helpful, kind of useful in some cases. Doesn't matter in others, but in this case, it, it does. Um, but I'm I'm still in the position where if I use a pan tool. <laughs> or try to draw something, immediately that imagery goes away. Uh, I'm a visual person, I like that imagery there. You know, I wanna be able to reference what I'm drawing to, to the site. So um, uh, in this case with the, with the geo image tool, right? Let me go back to that tool. Uh, you can see that I have a couple of 
I have a couple of modes here at the very beginning. I've got um, this rectangular mode, a polygon mode, and then this uh, uh, downloading data over here. All right. So um, I can't set that up. All right. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle in that mode. And it's telling me to disable auto resolution. So Francois, would you would you uh, typically um, tag like a property corner with that? Um, yeah. Uh, ultimately. Yeah, I might, I might, I might do a, a pin or some some feature that that was of interest. To me. Okay, thanks. All right. So so let's go over. I get this error statement here, um, and so you can see that. Um, uh, I have um, auto resolution is turned off. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Okay. And um, I'm editing my layer, georeferencing. Okay, no, that's fine. So I want it to be referenced by the, by the document there. And I wonder why it is giving me this. So I think you ahead. had a custom resolution that was too high. It says yeah. disable auto resolution. You didn't have auto resolution on. I know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to dial it down to 600. And that's probably not going to be enough. Let's go to 200. There we go. And you know, let's push it and see if we can go to 400. Hey, that's nice. All right. Okay, so so now I've got this image, and because I've drawn it in this rectangular mode, right? If I turn on georeferencing, it gives me the entire planet or fills my screen, right? But now if I go to any other tool, that image persists as a geo image. Which is kind of nice. Uh, so now I can, you know, pivot around. It's just this flat image. It's not a bitmap, but uh, effectively it it works like one. So now that I've got now that I've got this, boy, wouldn't it be nice to get some to get some contour? So I'm I'm going to pan back here and I'm going to go to to geo image, and I'm going to choose a, um, a a different. Uh, set of services here. And instead of image with labels or imagery, right? I'm gonna choose, uh, is it national? No, I'm gonna go for topographic. That's what I want. Yeah, so I'll hit okay. And I'll change that to automatic since that probably can be problematic for me. There we go. So, uh, so now my my geo image is um, uh, this topographic map, and I can scale back as far as I want. Uh, <clears throat> the topos are pretty hard to read, but if I zoom in here, you can you can see them. Let's see if going to black and white mode helps. Probably not. Uh, you can just barely see the, the topos, right? Kind of faintly here. And then if I just pan around, you can, uh, oh, I got an image download fail. Uh, it's downloading now, there we go, All right? So obviously if I wanna trace these topos or make use of them in some way, um, if I try to draw a polygon, then that, that goes away. So once again, with my geo reference, um, uh, with my geo image tool on, uh, there, I'm going to bring them back and I'm going to draw another rectangle here. Uh, this one I'm going to make considerably larger, say something like that. 
And now you can see that the surface is service is topographic on this image. Um, I'm going to send it to back control B. So now I've got a small georeference image, and that is services world imagery. And then I've got a larger one, and that is topographic. So I can have multiple of these georeferenced images. And if I draw them with a with a bounding box, right? Whether it be rectangular or a polygon, then once I I um, proceed to do other work, it'll be persistent. Uh, so let me see. Um, uh, no, no chats have popped up. So, okay, no questions so far. Okay, so let me flip over to another file. Can you guys see this? This is very similar. We see I've it. drawn the, the contours. Nice contour work. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Um, so here, I just, uh, I didn't want to do this, you know, in, in real time because uh, that's kind of tedious for you guys to watch. So you can see that I did that very same thing. Uh, I was just kind of figuring this out. So I actually tiled up multiple georeferenced images here instead of doing just one, one big one. Um, but I've gone ahead and just drawn some polygons to trace these, uh, these contours, right? Now I'm sure that there's a that there's a methodology where I can import GIS data directly and not have to manually trace contours like this. Um, but like I said, I'm 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 sort of figuring this out, and some of my workflows here are probably uh, uh, a little crude. So uh, you can, in fact, under File Import, let's see where is it. Uh, you can import uh, shape files. And so some of those shape files might have um, contour information um, as, a, as an alternative to uh, doing this kind of crude sort of tracing. But I didn't have a GIS data set, set at my fingertips. And so this just seemed like a, a good way to proceed for, for our purposes today. So uh, I've gone ahead and uh, drawn these uh, polygons. They're they're pretty crude. Right? Um, again, you can if I zoom in, you can see that I've I've traced. Here's a contour right here, and you can see that I've just uh, traced over it. Right, and uh, not not being excessively fussy, um, getting you know somewhat somewhat close. Oh, I don't like this one. So, you know, whatever, I'll just fiddle with it. Okay, but that's, that's good enough for my purposes. And then the contour elevations are kind of hard to read. These are 20 foot contours because they're, they're um, USGS contours. These are not very uh, granular uh, contours. So these are 20 foot contours. So just for my purposes, I've gone ahead and labeled these contours just so I know what I'm doing. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, uh, select similar tool, uh, this one right here. And um, uh, just choose uh, uh, class and type, Ugh, they're all gone. Uh, so there we go. There are my uh, five polys. And I can, uh, you know, standard kind of digital terrain modeling or site modeling uh, procedure. Um, I can either um, under survey input 2D polys to 3D source data. I can certainly do that. Uh, for five contours, really, it's almost not worth it. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and modify, convert those to 3D polys. And then that creates a group, right? So I'll just go ahead and move that up uh, 7,220 feet. That's the sea level elevation of the lowest contour. And then I'll ungroup those. 
So these are all at uh, 7,220 feet. And now I'll deselect the lowest one and then move up 20 feet and deselect the next one and move 3D and come here. And move 3D and move 3D. So now if I inspect each of these, this one's at uh, 7,300, this one's at 7,280, 7,260, 7,240, 7, so on and so forth, right? All right, so, um, okay. Go ahead and select those. And under AEC, terrain, create a site model from source data. Uh, minor contour interval, eight feet. Uh, no, let's go with two feet. <clears throat> and um, we'll do uh, smooth contours. And, yeah, that's all fine. Okay, great. Boom. So there, there's my, there's my um, site model. And I'll go ahead and send it back. And I'll go ahead and send these guys to, to back. Right. And so now if I look, there we go. Whoops, there's my site model. I'll go ahead and uh, set the minimum elevation to 7,000 feet, just to give it more of a skirt. It's visually a little more satisfying. This is your plain old garden variety site model. Nice work. All right, so um, um, here's here's where my my um, workflow gets 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 really crude. Um, so you know, forgive me. Uh, again, there's there may be a better way to do this, but I am really dying to have this. Um, this geo image actually onto my onto my site um, again because um, I'm a visual person and it's fun. Uh, so uh, very crudely, I'm just going to do a screenshot. So here we go, screenshot, boom, and I'll go ahead and save that to the desktop. And then in the resource manager, I'm just gonna create a new uh, RenderWorks texture. And I'll just import that image. Um, uh, it is not one inch wide, that's about 570 feet or so. And so I'll go ahead and um, uh, draw a rectangle and I will, um, well, I have a couple of options really. One is I could create a texture bed. That would be, that would probably be the most um, um, uh, legitimate way to do this. So, so let's go ahead and do that. So under AEC, um, I'll go ahead and, um, uh, create an object from shapes, um, site modifier. Oh, while I've got this thing selected, I'm going to jot down its dimensions. It's 551 feet and seven inches, give or take. Okay, and instead of grade limits, I'll do a texture bed and um, I'll create a, a new class and I'll call it um, Ariel. Sure, why not? All right, so there's my site modifier. And let's go to my, um, my aerial photography class and add a texture to it. 
I just grab everything because why not? All right. Yeah. So. Hmm. Wonder what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I need to update this. Nope. Hmm, very interesting. Maybe my class is off. Nope, it's on. Ah, uh, use it creation perhaps. Check out your render tab, see if the texture is pointed at it. Yeah, it's a site modifier, so. Oh, haha, ha. I need to put it in the. I think that might be it. Nope. So let's look at the. Let's look at the texture bed. Config proposed. Hmm. Oh, it's applied to proposed instead of existing. Maybe that's it. Ah. Goodness. All right, so there it is. So I'm going to need to do some rotation and some attribute mapping, right, with this. So th this might not be the best methodology um, in order to to do that. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ditch that. Let's uh, delete that. And update. All right. So that didn't work out. My other option is to um, trace over this. And let's go ahead and try to um, convert that to a 3D poly. And then let's go ahead and uh, send that to surface. Okay. And uh, we can go ahead and apply the texture to it. No, it doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. I think my best bet was probably the, the texture That after all. Would mapping the texture help you in that circumstance? Yeah, yeah, that's, I, I wanted to avoid fooling with that, but. Understood. Uh, um, that might be what I had to do. So, um, the, the, um, Yeah. So let's see if I can map that. No, nah, it's not letting me map it. All right, well, I'm gonna have to figure this one out. The, the, the other alternative, of course, is simply to apply that texture to the site model itself. The problem with that is the whole, um, the whole repetition thing. And even if I specify that that uh, texture is a non-repeating texture. If I deselect tile image, right, um, it's on the site model, it's still going to repeat it. So what I would probably need to do is just isolate, create a, a crop of the site model that corresponded to the site and then, um, and then map it. Let's see if I could. That helps. No, that's exactly the same. That's the same. Yeah, it just won't do anything but a um, planar mapping. Yeah. 
So here I can slide it around, but that does not seem very satisfactory. In that 3D view, it wasn't showing it at that level. It's not at the same level as the site. It's down at your zero. That's where we are seeing the mapping. Yeah, but this is just the geo image. This is not the, because I, I stuck my site model at sea level elevation. I see. But the, but the, the site modifier is at the level of the, of the model. Yeah, so you see how that's 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 tiling. So something I need to figure out is how to get this nice projection onto my onto my site and have it map properly. Anyone else have any bright ideas? Perfect. <laughs> we broke it. Or I guess, or I guess we, you could we, capture we, a, a larger image um, and then you're not having to worry about the tiling as much as it could overlap the boundary. Right, right. You capture a larger image or or make a smaller site. Um, yep, yep. Um, I, I even tried uh, draping the uh, with the 3D power pack draping. Well, I guess we can try that again. Um, draw a rectangle here. If you extract the face or the surface of the site and then apply texture, does that give you a different result? That would be a NURBS surface, I believe. Yep. Um, I, I don't have a good feeling about that, but I'm certainly game to try. Uh, let's see. 3D, I want to go ahead and uh, I think what I would want to do is actually is project. So let me go ahead and trace that rectangle and then project first the rectangle, uh, then the site model and see what we get. get a group. Nope. <laughs> uh, uh, didn't didn't want to project the whole rectangle. It just it gave me the whole site as a series of nerve surfaces. Interesting. Oh, and it 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 blew up my site model while I was at it. Um, so going to need to play with this, but, um, oh, um, what, one thing that is kind of cool about georeferencing is having, having, having georeferenced my file here with this geo image, right? If I go back to my document settings and go to, oh, not units, come on. Right, you can see it's, right, remember it automatic, I put this information in, so it's, it's all good. So now if I decide, well, hey, um, how about, um, how about a heliodon? So if I just drop a heliodon in over here, you can see that uh, the heliodon automatically uh, matches the latitude and longitude of the georeferencing. So there's that. And um... Francois, I'm wondering if you could do a custom crop of the geo image. So you take a larger geo image and then crop it similar to what your, your DTM shape is. Yeah. That would be one way to get the, the imagery 
without having to create a texture, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure, let's give it a try. We've got time. So uh, I'm lazy, so I'm just going to grab the crop from the DTM. So I'm going to right click on the DTM. Oh, that and, was a pro move right there. And edit, edit the crop. And so there it is. So I'll just copy that and then exit and paste it in place. So there's my crop. Okay, and then let's go to uh, my uh, georeference tool, boop, or geo image tool. And um, it, it may not like such a big area, but let's try it. Oh, look at that. And we'll change that service to, Imagery. Okay. So let me send that to back. And so, well, I don't need to because I've already copied the crop. So I'll just edit that. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay. No, no. Need to send that to front. And command six. I'll go ahead and uh do a screen grab whichever you know reasonably um oh actually let's try this let's copy this geo image and then under edit let's paste it as a bitmap let's see what happens oh no all right we're uh -huh. gonna <laughs> sad trombone <laughs> let's go ahead and go back to the screen capture option uh so, so you're ahead. not able to paste the the crop that you use can you just paste that in as as your path for your geo image hey let's give it a try paste in place It's pasting in place the yeah. image that you copied. Yeah, yeah, because I, I copied it. Right. So let me send that to back. Let me recopy my crop. There we go. So copy that, edit, paste in place. Maybe delete this one. Yep. You can't have two cropping objects. Yeah, I probably can't have two cropping objects. And send to front. Whoa, look at that. Wow. You're, you're brilliant, man. Wow. Look at that. It's all you. So fancy. I'm just a monkey. <laughs> yeah, that's but certainly a pro move to grab that crop shape, though. It saves you so much time. Yeah, yeah. So it's still not 3D, right? So, so now I would like I probably need to like make a texture out of that. Um, there's got to be an easier way to apply a texture to the to the site model. Uh, let me let me do this. Let me go and create. Um, let me create a new texture. I'll call it big site. And I, I, I don't know how big that is. I probably should. Uh, oh, look at that. Looks, my geo image is still in my object info palette. So let's um let's try uh no that's just a that's just its um coordinates if you so, had you know, meets and bounds uh you could use the set by image if that that was within the image but i guess sure the site wouldn't be there well that's all right we'll 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 figure it out so i'm just going to hmm. Just approximate this. Mm. Francois, you can't project that onto the surface like you would with other things? Uh, yeah, yeah, I could like, what I would do like before texture beds, right? You could just draw a polygon and send a surface onto a site model. But I don't think I can, I think I tried and that didn't work with the geo image. I mean, I'll try again. 
Uh, let's go to AEC terrain, um, send to surface. No. Uh, but let's go and put the big site texture on this. Yeah, you can see because of the because of the faceted nature, every it tries to apply the texture to each each plane. There's got to be a way to do this, and I'm just too ignorant to know what it is. I tell you what, I'm going to look into this um, and uh, figure out a way to project that onto the site in a believable way. And if I do figure it out. I'll uh, I'll make a quick little quick time movie and I'll post it and I'll send everybody an email so that you know you're not left hanging. <laughs> That's generous of you. Thank you. Nah, nah. Uh, uh, I I just wish I knew how to do this in real time, but uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to go back and do a little bit more legwork so, here. So extracting the face is only gonna probably give us one facet of that. Exactly. Multifaceted surface. So yeah, yeah. Long way around. But I mean, um, I know I've done it before, uh, many many versions ago. So it could be that that uh, there's been something in the geometry that doesn't make it quite so straightforward, or the methodology has evolved, or um, I've just you know forgotten how to do it. <laughs> uh, which um, you know that happens. The important thing uh, is that you know the the modeling the site that's you know that's certainly that's certainly nice um but um really the the interesting thing about the georeferencing is uh you know uh pretty aerial pictures aside that you now have a rock solid coordinate system so that for example if you had a survey that you imported you could click on a pin as as don intimated uh, a while ago when you when you set your your you know you could you could get a coordinate um, to to a high degree of accuracy from your surveyor in latitude and longitude of one of the pins of your project you could snap to that uh, point on your imported survey and then everything that you imported that was georeferenced would be in it in the correct location according to the um, projection method that you've selected for your for your team's project that's the that's the real benefit of this is that you know you're you're putting your buildings in the right place on campus and you're not you're not off um so um and then uh again you can you you've got you've got if you pay for a, an account with esri then um you've got access to better more higher res imagery but i just opened i just did a free account and was able to to download the imagery that you saw today so that's that's still you know i pretty good so um so really the you know being a visual guy i like to see uh, renderings and stuff like that but but the the important thing is 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 having your your uh, reference system be be pretty pretty solid, and I know you know some of the people on this on this uh, call, Al, for example, have had um, you know real world um, issues dealing with large projects where multiple buildings uh, might be involved or where the reference point was some distance away, and so this is this is really helpful. um and then you know for me i just like having um in addition the as a bonus the the heliodon automatically registers so i can i can be pretty confident of my sun studies and so forth i think that's pretty much what i have for today again i will uh, i will look into mapping uh 
terrain onto a site. And if I can figure out how that's done, I'll let everybody know. Francois, are you taking questions? Sure, sure. So can we back up to where you were showing the latitude and longitude and the um, georeference settings? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me just start with a new file so I don't break this one. How's that? <laughs> um, so I will go ahead and change my scale just because it's convenient. Okay. And uh, let me go back to um, uh, my web browser. I'm here at my office. If we zoom in real close, you'll be able to see me. Uh, see, I'm right there. Um, no, so, so, you know, here it is. Um, I'm somewhere about, you know, I'm right in front of this little tree here. So I'm just gonna right click here and I get a latitude and longitude. Right, so, so what I was wondering is where, where you enter that, there's a, a, it asks for angle to true north. Uh huh. I wondered. I wondered what exactly that meant. Whether it that had just to do with the magnetic deviation or not. No, no. That's just. That's just if, for example, you're getting your your site and you're having to, you know, like if you, oftentimes I'll rotate my site, so that okay. my building is orthogonal. Okay. Right. So if I were doing that, then um, that's where I would be concerned with that. Okay. Um, I probably I probably don't trust, um, you know, true north on um, this Google imagery. I would I would have to go off of something a little more reliable like a survey. Okay. So Thank so you. yeah. So under under um, document settings, georeferencing, I'll just go ahead and put in you know thirty point two six zero five one and minus ninety seven point. Right, and this is what you're asking is angle to true north. So that's yes. in my site, yep. So there we go. And um, geo image. And, you know, there, there it is. Okay. So if you wanted to work at a, an, a rotation so you could work orthogonally, you'd enter it there. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and try that. Okay. Um, I, having said that I wouldn't, I will go ahead and uh, so, boop, boop, boop. I think we decided that 500 was safe. That'd be a different, different data set. <laughs> All right, well, likes, likes that. No, it doesn't like that. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's just, I'll just trace this shadow line, All right? So that's a um, 90 minus, you know, 68. So, let's see if I got that right. No, didn't like that. There we go. Just had my signs wrong. Okay. Okay. So now it's now it's my imagery is rotated, and as you can see, not quite, but you know. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, other questions?
All right. Well, thanks everybody. I appreciate your your patience with my fumbling around, and um, it's good to see everybody. And uh, yeah, you know, any suggestions for next month? Let me know. Thank you, Francois. Happy New Year. Thank you. Hey, Happy New Year to you too. All right. Bye, take care, everybody. everybody. Bye, bye. Bye, <clears throat> bye bye. Hello again, everybody. I'm following up on our meeting from earlier today. Uh, we uh, had some difficulties, or I had some difficulties getting my uh, texture to map onto the site model and um, got that to work. So I thought I'd share it with everyone. So here I have the same uh, site model that we derived by manually drafting the contours from uh, the GIS server information. And then um, floating above it right here is that same geo image that I had before of just a localized area of the site. Uh, you can see that there. Uh, and I've got it there and you can see that I'm, uh, I've moved it up to uh, about a 7,300 uh, foot elevation. You can see it's just floating right above the site there. And that's so that when I'm in top plan view and I render this in OpenGL or I'm sorry, shaded now in 2022, I can use that as a reference since that image is geolocated. Um, I can use it as a reference to map the texture that's underneath. So the texture itself, which is what was giving us difficulty, uh, the problem was that I didn't, I didn't have it set to the right size. So here's that texture in the resource manager. Uh, let me edit that and show it to you. And when I measured the original image in, um, from the geo-referenced image, it ended up being right about 4,600 square feet from uh, along the long axis. So that's what I did. I went to the image and I reset this, uh, this image size to 4,600 feet long. Okay, and then I'm previewing that at 6,000 square feet, but if I make it that rectangle 4,600 feet, you can see it's, that's, that's what it is. So that's approximately the right scale for my texture. And then I just applied it um, to the site model. Uh, if I click on the site model and go to object info and click over to the render tab, you can see I've applied it there. Now, when I go to um, texture mapping, you can see that when I activate the texture mapping school uh, tool, rather, I can apply a rotation and a scale. So I can, I can tweak that and I can give it an, an offset if I need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay in this shaded render mode and I'm just gonna go to not top plan view, but just uh, top view. There we go, there's top view. And what you can see is that I have right over here, you can see there is the boundary of my image file, my geo image, and then underneath slightly lower resolution is the, the texture map. And you can see that um, if I just uh, move it slightly, say from that point, to this point, that should pretty much map properly, only it didn't. So I need to move it a little bit. So I'll just keep dragging it till it looks about right. There we go. Pretty close. And um, Again, if I just click on my image, there's my geo image. Right? You can see it's I've got it I've got it pretty closely aligned. If I delete that image, you can see it's a little it's a little off, so I can keep fine tuning it. So again, I want to click on the site model, activate the uh, mapping tool, and then I can just uh, nudge it a little bit um, in the render tab and um, just kind of move it around till it maps properly onto my uh, geo image. So that's it. Um, hopefully that's, that's helpful.
Uh, it's a bit of a trial and error. It looks like I you know, might need to scale it up just a tiny bit. So it's gonna be a bit of trial and error, not quite as accurate as having this geo image, but the geo image is of course flat. And uh, so I, I'm not, not mapping it onto the site. All right, good luck.